Hi, welcome back to the channel. I'm big now on the screen for you to see me. Okay, let's get in the video. Today we're going to be doing basic pen testing. If you're into CTFs, hacking, cybersecurity, then hit that subscribe button because we're going to have to do plenty more of these try hack me rooms together. All right, got my Kali virtual machine set up and we've got our basic penetration testing. So I'll go start your machine up. Make sure you've got your IP there. I'm just gonna go ahead and export this IP into an environment variable and uh, make sure that that has worked. So we've got a single task called web app testing and privilege escalation. And we have a little bit of a guide of what's gonna be coming up for us. In this set of tasks, you'll learn the following, brute forcing, hash cracking, service enumeration, and Linux enumeration. The main goal here is to learn as much as possible. Make sure you are connected to our network using our open VPN and credits to Josiah Pierce from Volnhub. Subtask, deploy the machine and connect to the network. So make sure you go sudo open uh, VPN, your username and uh, the open VPN file that you uh, download from TryHackMe. So you can ping 10, 10, 10, 10, uh, make sure that you've got a connection and we can ping our box to see if that's up. Great. Find the services exposed by the machine. So classic, starting off with an Nmap scan. I'm just gonna go ahead and make a directory for this and then CD into said directory. Okay, so back to it, we're gonna do our Nmap and we can see a scan that I've done from earlier. So double that verbose mode. We want to uh, get as much back that we can. Skipping host discovery, because we know that the host is up, our IP, and then we wanna just output to an Nmap. Dot txt so we can save everything somewhere. All right, you got a lot of ports. So we have, looks like maybe multiple web servers, 80 for HTTP traffic, 445 for HTTPS, or is that 443? I'm thinking of 443, so I don't know what the 445 is, so let's just wait. Okay, so our scan's done, didn't take that long. 994 closed TCP ports or con refused. So we have our SSH port, we have our 80 running an Apache server, 139 for Samba, which is a file share, workgroup, workgroup, 445, which is also Samba, Ubuntu, workgroup, workgroup, and we have 8009, which is running some Apache, so possibly what we're after, because our next question is, what is the name of the hidden directory on the web server? Enter the name without the dash. Right, let's go over and see what we're working with. So we've got an undergoing going maintenance. Please check back later. Uh, did they leave anything? Check our dev notes section if you need to know what to work on. So a little comment here, check our dev note section. So does that mean we've got some sort of dev directory developer? Yeah, we could sort of just like guess and guess, um, but let's sort of automate this guessing process. Uh, so we're looking for some hidden directory and yeah, we, we've got something. Uh, so there's a few um, directory search tools Durbuster, um, I like using GoBuster, we can use that. Uh, here's a one from last time. So let's try and use that. Uh, so we should just be able to go, we don't need to specify the ports. I still don't know what those other ports are. So if we just go um, GoBuster using the Dir for directory mode, um, the URL we're gonna pass through is just that, just on port 80. Uh, and the word list is just this Derb word list common TXT and we're gonna just output that to a gobuster.txt. Okay, so we scan's still going, but we have a development directory. So let's paste that in here, and we've got a couple of text files. So dev.txt. I've been messing with that struts stuff. It's pretty cool, I don't know what that is. I think it might be neat to host that on this server too. I haven't made any real web apps yet, but I have tried that example you got to show off how it works and it's the rest version of the example. Rest, is that how we send TCP traffic? Request, can't remember. Oh, and right now I'm using version 2.5.12. The other versions were giving me trouble. SMB has been configured K. I've got Apache set up. We'll put in our content later. J. So got uh, two users, 
K and J. Just realized we can, uh, we found that. Do research. Yeah, so those are some other. Anyway, so we've got some info here. So I'm going to leave this open because we've got a version number of something. So I don't know if that's the struts thing. I don't know if it's a version of um, Apache or a version of SMB. Not totally sure. So if we just go back to that development directory and look at the j.txe. For j, I've been auditing the contents of Etsy Shadow to make sure we don't have any weak credentials and I was able to crack your hash really easily. You know our password policy, so please follow it, change your that password as soon as possible. Okay, we need to crack, crack J's hash. Use brought, so our next point here, user brute forcing, use brute forcing to find the username and password, I think. A couple of little spelling errors here and there. Um, but I haven't completed it yet. Okay, so there's a few ways that we can go about this, but a popular way is using enum for Linux, and we've learnt this from one of our earlier boxes. Enum for Linux is a tool for enumerating information from Windows and Samba systems. And we know that there is a Samba system running. If we go back to our Nmap results, we've got that there. So it might already be there um, installed on your Kali machine, Kali machine, um, or you can grab it from uh, GitHub. So we run that, we'll uh, get the man page or the, the help page. So we run it, we've got some options and then we target the IP. So we've got get a user list. So that's definitely something that we want to do. Machine list, share list, password policy information. Or if we check under here, these additional, we've got do all simple enumeration. So it's basically do it all with a dash A. So let's do that. So enum for Linux dash A. And then we'll just uh, put in our IP there. So uh, just keep in mind that this scan might take a while. So if you're wondering if it's not working um, or, or something, just, just be patient. All right, uh, so our scan's complete and we can see at the end here that we have a couple of users, K and Jan. And that lines up with what we saw earlier with K and J. So I'll uh, save that off into your notes. And what I actually should have done is I should have outputted like this scan and put it into like a TXT. So learn from my mistake, should have done that. It's always good to have that, but I'm not running that again because it took heaps long. Uh, okay, so one user we need a brute force, but one another that we can log in as. So remember our message was that J has got the weak password. So we we're going to be focusing on J, which in this case is Jan. So we need to use something now for the password. And if we remember that we want to do some sort of brute force to get into this. So if we look up like SSH brute forcing and I'm doing SSH because I know that that's open on this particular box. So we can do things like use Metasploit. We can also use tools like Hydra, which is what I've used in the past a bit more than Metasploit. So I'm going to go pick Hydra for this one. So we can use a dash L and we know our username. So the difference here is we don't have a password, but we do have a list of passwords. So let's use the dash P and let's put in a word list. So in our user share word lists and we have our Roku TXT, we can try that for our passwords, common passwords. And then we just need to go SSH into, and in this case, our IP of our box. And yeah, we can also run the T, um, which is like the threads or time. So apparently we can go for speed it up, use more threads. And we can also use the dash o file for output. Dash o write found log and password files to a file. So yeah, trying to get in the habit of making sure that we uh, do that. Dash o and we'll just call it hydra.txt. Looks like that had an issue. I'm just gonna try rearrange the order of our command. Spotted my mistake, capital P. Uh, and if you use the dash uppercase V, that'll put it into a verbose mode, which will actually show you the attempts that it's making. Um, lowercase V will also put in a verbose mode, but you can see some things, but I don't know. I, I find it helpful just if I can see what the program's doing. Um, then I know that it's working. Okay, so after reading a little bit more about Hydra, um, using that dash T, changing it from a four to like a 64, speeds up the process, it's the amount of tasks that it can do at once. 
and uh, yeah, we flew through it at 64, but it was a lot more messy. There was a lot more connection issues and that. Uh, so yeah, good to play around with, but um, TAC T4 uh, was just too slow. 64 got us there. So we can see our password here. And our next question is, what service do you use to access the server? Answer in the abbreviation. So what we were trying to brute force, right? So let's SSH into our user Jan use our IP there and we don't need to specify port number because it's default. So say yes and paste in our password and we're in. So we're logged into Jan uh, in this basic two host. So what is the name of the other user? So we already know that it's K, but if we just list out our other user directory folders in home, we can just confirm that they are a user on this box. So you found another user, what can you do with this information? Well, we need to um, escalate privileges, right? So having a look around inside K's folder, we do see a PASS pass backup. So let's have a look at what that is. So regular file, no read permission. Yeah, so I'm leaning towards um, using SSH via um, an encrypted key to get in. So we can SSH from this user from Jan into K. So we can read this. So what if we SSH as K and we go into localhost, so this machine, and we pass through using the dash I, so the identity file, and we pass through that key. So it didn't like that. It looks like we still need a password. So just looking at the hint, it says that he used John the Ripper to brute force the pass phrase. How about we grab this pass, we'll take it to our local machine to brute force the pass phrase. So we can use um, SCP, which is open SSH secure file copy, copy files between hosts on a network. So we want to copy using SSH over through Jan, through the IP, and then we specify where we want to go. So that's what we want to copy. And we can go and just put that in our local directory. So we just need the password from earlier and we got a permission denied there. So if we look around a little bit more, uh, we don't have the right to actually do anything with this file, uh, but I do notice that we have an SSH there. So if we look inside that, everyone actually has read access of this private key and that's what an id underscore rsa is public key needs to be matched with a private key to identify so we can go ahead and actually cat that out and then we can just slap that in our own so all the way up control shift c let's just make one on our local system paste that in there control x y save that off and now if we try and ssh into k but this time we use the dash i for identity file and we pass through that so we have bad permissions and we still need a password so we found this one here but this final password and that's the hint that we had earlier using john the ripper to brute force the password so the other thing it did say is that we have bad permissions so i think think from memory we need is it 600 yeah so if we just run change mod 600 um then we don't have this permissions error oh, i mean it even says there yeah not accessible by others so the six gives us read and write and then zero zero removes it for everyone else okay so this is where we're going to step over and use john to brute force the passphrase. So looking at Stack Overflow, we can use JPJ to John to convert your RSA key to a GTR understandable format. I'm just gonna make a quick backup of it just in case I do anything wrong. So apparently that was the wrong uh, path to follow. We actually do wanna go SSH to John and that'll actually give us a hash that we can go ahead and crack. So let's go ahead and output that into the go.hash and then it looks like we can just run that against the word list of our choice. Uh, so dash word list and I will be using the infamous rockyou.txt. Just gonna make sure we actually get the right place. Hey, awesome, there we go. And we've got our password. So again, we can run the command from earlier, but this time we can put in our passphrase and we can spell it right. And we can spell it right. 
and we actually get in. How cool is that? So we can cut out this pass.ba key, which I thought was something we needed earlier in the CTF, but it looks like that was the final thing that we need in the CTF. And that brings us to a fully finished room. Awesome, that was a lot of fun. Basic penetration testing or pen testing for short. I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, the room. I forgot that I had my camera on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's right. There's a camera on. Hi. Oh, even better. Um, hello and goodbye. Thank you for tuning in for this video. Clearly, I don't know how to use a camera, um, so I'm sort of new to this. If you can, please uh, leave a like and subscribe to help me um, learn. That would be great. That would mean very much. Um, but yeah, did you like this uh, walkthrough? Um, did you enjoy this room? Uh, this is sort of one of the early rooms in Try Hack Me. It's been around for a little while, so it might not be totally new, but if it is new to you, um, that's awesome. Um, please let me know how you went. Uh, what did you struggle on? Did you solve it a different way? Um, there's plenty of ways to skin the cat, as they say, and this is just one way that I found. Um, so yeah, it was a lot of fun, and um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.